In April 1989, a strange car accident triggered a decades-long search for a missing Montana woman. Patricia Meehan has still not been found, but bizarrely has been reported as seen thousands of times. On the night of April 20th, 1989, a woman called Peggy Bueller was driving down Montana Highway 200 in Circle, Montana, accompanied by her father. During their journey at approximately 8.15pm, they suddenly observed a car driving on the wrong side of the dark country road, and concerningly, it was headed straight towards them. Bueller managed to swerve out of the way just in time, but the car behind them copped the brunt of the impact. The oncoming vehicle crashed into that of Carol Hines, a police dispatcher who was off duty at the time. Happily unharmed, Hines clamoured from the car, surveying the crash scene. As she did, a blonde woman emerged from the car that had hit her. The woman silently walked right up to her and just stared, while she did not utter a word. Heinz later said that the errant driver gave her a look that eerily felt like she was gazing right through her. The woman then walked away and climbed over a nearby fence. Heinz later reported that the woman observed the scene in a completely detached manner, as if she had not been involved in the incident at all. The other driver, Bueller, had stopped and returned to assist Heinz and witnessed the strange behaviour. She said that as she surveyed the scene of the accident, she noticed a woman on the other side of the fence standing motionless like a bystander and not reacting as if it had happened to her. After a few moments, the woman walked away into the field and was seen to completely vanish into the night. Police soon realised that that woman was 37-year-old Patricia Meehan. Prior to her bewildering disappearance, Meehan lived a very normal life in Bozeman, Montana. Though when young she had started early childhood development, she had changed her career preference at some stage to become a ranch hand due to her love of animals. She also had some casual jobs as well as working on the ranch just to earn enough money to support herself. Before Mian's accident, the last person to cite her was a landlord. He'd observed that she wasn't really acting like her usual self at the time and seemed almost hyped up. He was not the only one to notice her unusual behaviour. Her mother, Dolly Meehan, had found, sometime prior to her daughter's disappearance, that she was becoming increasingly depressed, quiet and withdrawn. Her mother guessed that she'd been reviewing her life and what she'd accomplished. She sensed her daughter's regret at not having had children because of her realisation of wanting to love and care for them. The day before her disappearance, Mian had spoken with her father in Pittsburgh by phone when she told him that she was feeling stressed and wanted to come home. Very little is known about Mian's life directly before her accident, but some theorise that she may have been trying to end it by deliberately driving on the wrong side of the road that night in 1989. Patricia Mian's family later found her camera still containing a roll of undeveloped film. Once processed, they found that she had captured a rather chilling self-portrait in a mirror. The photograph suggested to them just how troubled she may have been feeling at the time. Within half an hour of the accident, authorities identified Mian as the blonde driver who had apparently caused it. They began a search of the area around the scene and eventually discovered a trail of tennis shoe prints that led through a field about three quarters of a mile away from the scene of the crash. They believed that the tracks had been made by Mian. The investigators at the scene followed the signals of Prince until around 3am when the tracks eventually dwindled and disappeared due to the terrain of the area. They decided to adjourn their search until first light the next day. Soon after they were notified of Mian's disappearance, her family travelled to Montana to assist in the search. Over five days, volunteers drove ATVs and rode horses throughout the terrain, scouring nearby mountains and even remote abandoned coal mines in the surrounding area, looking for any sign of the missing woman. At one stage of the search, the Mians even organised their helicopter to scan the terrain in their desperate search to find their daughter, but without success. As Circle was nearly 400 miles away from Mian's house in Bozeman, neither her family nor the local authorities could think of a rational explanation as to why she would have been in that location in the first place or where she may have been travelling to. In addition, the police had no idea if she was injured or deliberately hiding from them. At first, it seemed as though she may have vanished to avoid prosecution for leaving the scene of an accident. 
However, later eyewitness reports of her increasingly strange behaviour suggested to police and psychiatrists that she may be suffering from a rare and dangerous form of amnesia. The most common theory around what happened to Mian that night is that she sustained amnesia as a result of brain trauma caused by the accident. It was a possibility that did make sense, as many individuals who suffer from post-traumatic amnesia are in a state of confusion and disorientation immediately after the trauma and are usually unable to recall the events of the immediate aftermath. If Mian also developed retrograde amnesia, she was possibly unable to remember her life before the accident, meaning she may have forgotten her own identity, as well as the fact that she was even in an accident at all. Psychologist Don Laplante has speculated on Mian's mental health at the time of the collision. He concluded that she was experiencing a very difficult time in her life and that the dramatic accident may have caused a head injury. The combination of both the mental state and the traumatic impact may have resulted in amnesia. He believed that she may well not know who she is and have lost memories of her past. It was as if she was out searching for herself throughout the country. During their investigation, police theorised that Mian may have made her way out of the area by hiding in a hay truck that had been parked about a half a mile from the scene of the collision. Whether knowingly or because she crawled in for shelter and either lost consciousness or fell asleep. An alternative theory was that she may have hitchhiked away out of the area and through the Pacific Northwest. There have been over 100 sightings of her at several truck stops between Montana and Seattle, but in each case, she had somehow left the area by the time authorities arrived. Over the years, her family became very concerned for her safety and sanity, particularly after learning that she'd been crying on several occasions. One waitress, Barbara Clemens, reported that she once saw men sitting in the restaurant where she worked and noted that she was acting very strangely. She said men were perched at the same table for over an hour and a half, mainly just observing as other people walked by and talking to herself. Clemens said that she came across as disoriented and spacey, as if unaware of where or who she was. Clemens even offered her assistance because she appeared so lost. Another waitress, Barb Ruff, claimed she even served me in her hometown of Bozeman in May 1989, only a few miles from her previous address. She said Miam was in a big hurry to eat breakfast, but when asked why, she said only that she was going shopping. Since her disappearance, there have been over 5,000 alleged sightings of Miam, with some actually confirmed by police. Her parents, who sadly are no longer with us, said neither they nor friends ever heard from their daughter after her disappearance, though they always clung to the hope that she was alive and well, and that one day may find her way home. Her father, Thomas Meehan, said the family wanted her back just to know that she was safe. He said that not knowing who was giving her lifts was the biggest worry, and that he prayed that she was with good people. 